Hey everybody, uh, it's me. I'm back. It's been a long time. It's been way too long. I, I understand that. Uh, it's been irresponsibly long since I've posted anything, and my only excuse is I was writing my dissertation. Yeah. Okay, so why haven't I updated? Why haven't I written? I was writing my dissertation. Um, why haven't I paid my taxes? I was writing my dissertation. Uh, why am I not a better person? I was writing my dissertation, right? But it's done now. I just submitted it. I defended it a couple weeks, and so now I don't have an excuse anymore. So now I'm back, and I'm really excited to you know, start posting some more tutorials, some more videos. I'll be showing off some new tools and some really cool stuff. And I, I, I swear this time I'm not going to abandon you again. Maybe. But, you know, I plan to be back uh, posting more regularly. And I also have a really important, exciting announcement. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Is I just recently was offered and accepted a position at Haskins Laboratories uh, at Yale. Technically, it's not part of Yale, but the web address is haskins.yale.edu. So when people ask, I just say Yale because it's a lot easier. But yeah, I'll be moving to New Haven, Connecticut uh, in just a couple months. You know, I'll be graduating in about a month. Uh, traveling for a few weeks with my, my family, my girlfriend, and then going to New Haven, Connecticut. Um, and I'm really excited. I visited the people, saw the place. Uh, it seems like a great group of people. I'm really looking forward to getting off the ground, start start working with them. And just, uh, yeah, you know, writing about my experiences and what I've learned there and how it can apply to stuff that people are working on. Uh, one thing in particular I'm really interested in is because um, I think it'll give me an opportunity to work with larger data sets and to talk about big data because that's kind of a, a new focus that's, I think, starting to come around these days. So I'm really excited about that. I will post more about that. I'm looking very much forward to it. Um, but enough about me just you know, gushing about this and divulging a lot of aspects of personal information. Uh, I also want to use this as just a segue into actually providing a really brief a tutorial, uh, actually answering a question that was posted on my blog a few months ago by Michael. And Michael, I'm sorry, I was a huge jerk, didn't really respond for a few months, but here it is. A pretty simple, straightforward query. It's about how do you mask out one half of the brain to be ones and everything else to be zeros. So we're going to be using FSL maths. We're going to use it on a template brain, the MNI152 brain that comes with the FSL package. And I'll just show you how to do that with FSL maths. So in this directory, I have my template. I have this MNI152 brain right here. And what I'm going to use with FSL maths is instructed to make it a binary image Okay, right here, I'm going to input that template, and then this ROI command is going to give me these different options to set the boundaries of my ROI. So you'll notice in the documentation for FSL maths is that there's X min, X max, Y min, Y max, Z min, Z max, T min, T max. Okay, so negative one just means to do the full extent for whatever the dimensions are for that data set. And so I'm just focusing on the X because I can, you know, mask out different hemispheres left or right. And you also need to know what is going to be the midpoint of that, okay? And to do that, I'm just going to type FSL info on the brain I'm using it on, this template image. And notice dim one, which corresponds to the X values, that is going to be 91 voxels in this case. So divide by two, um, in this case I'm just going to use 45, just kind of going to round down. And I'm going to use that to be the extent uh, beyond which I make everything zeros. Okay, so play around with this. You can flip this to be you know, 45 and negative one if you want the other hemisphere. Just play around with it. And then I give it the test.nai just as a, you know, an example output. So if I look at FSL view test.nai.gz, okay, you're going to see that it's going to be one of the hemispheres. It's going to be ones. Everything else is going to be zeros. And I can change it if I want to flip the hemispheres. I'll just switch these two numbers right here. So negative one and 45. Okay, load it up again, look at the test view, and the other side is now ones. Okay, you can further use, you know, you can multiply this by another mask if you want to get rid of the ventricles, other stuff. Just focus on gray matter, white matter, what have you, but that's the basic operation and it'll give, get you off the ground. So yeah, uh, very simple kind of kind of wang bang, wang bang, whatever. Uh, just a very straightforward, simple tutorial. Uh, just about how to do that simple operation. Hope it helps. Um, just gives you kind of an idea about how to use these mathematical operators that you can use in you know, FSL, AFNI, SPM. They're all kind of the same in a lot of ways.
to make, you know, geographic, geometric uh, figurations like boxes or rectangles for regions of interest. So hope that helps. I got some stuff on my plate. I got a lot of stuff in drafts that's coming down the pike. Uh, what I think is going to happen next is slice analysis, if you guys have heard of that. Um, pretty useful. I'm using it in my dissertation. And, you know, some other stuff that I use in my dissertation I plan to put in there as well, like a leave one out analysis, showing how to do that, uh, possibly MVPA. So I have a lot of stuff. And, yeah, so just uh, be looking for that. I'm really excited to be back, and I'll see you guys soon.